sequence, the skeleton, right? And how parts of the skeleton move, how they move in relationship to each other, how the whole skeleton moves. Path, movement in space. Anything that has to do with directions in space. Initiation. It's really about time, when, where something begins, right? Things have to begin somewhere. It's just the nature of the world we're in. Foundation. We live in a gravitational environment. So this is seeing the person, relationship to gravity, weight, and base of support. Flow. This is really about our relationship. Initiation and flow are about our relationship to time. Right? And so sudden and sustained, that's really about time. And, and it, this has to do with the rhythm of, of how we're doing. It has to do with our attitudes whether what we're doing is controlled or whether we just let it go, right? Effort. Effort has to do with patterns of muscle action. And like I said, and all these things have to do with the experience of these things. Effort has to do with the experience of our muscles and how hard we're working. This has to do with the qualitative experience. Where is our weight? Where do we start? Where are we heading in space? What are we moving? Okay. <clears throat> Last category is respiration. Sequence, effort, and respiration all relate to the body. Path and foundation have to do with space. Foundation has to do with weight. Flow has to do with the quality of movement, initiation, and flow have to do with time. And so does breathing in a way. So these things are related. But really, the skeleton, the muscles, the breath. Right? I don't think I have to define respiration. But when we're looking at respiration, I think the things that we're interested in are the dimensions of respiration and the rhythms of respiration. So the dimensions, where are we moving? In which directions are we moving? What are the shapes of our breath? Right? Uh, which places move along with breathing? I mean, respiration has to do with effort, because we could talk about primary respiratory muscles, which is really muscle, the diaphragm, and all the secondary muscles. We can, I mean, well, let's stick here for a moment. Uh, dimensions. And then rhythms. What are the rhythms of your breathing? Like, how long do you breathe in? How long do you breathe out? Is it smooth? And you can see there are all of a sudden we're talking about flow in relationship to breath. And breath, in some ways, is related, like flow, to consciousness, the state of consciousness, to move. Okay? So there we have respiration. And it's more than just whether you're breathing or not. Just like um, ATM lessons are more than just seesaw breathing. I mean, that's the great thing about Alexander and I, right? You can glue your breath, you can weld your breath, and then, I can't remember the lesson number. Stopping the breath? What a great lesson, right? I mean, I've been a public risk teacher for how long? I finally do this lesson where Moshe asked the question, when you hold your breath, do you hold your breath in, or do you hold it out? Damn, I did not think of that. Right? I mean, like, how long have I been breathing, right? And you know, we hold our breath one way or another. There's a whole lesson that explores that distinction. Right? So with respiration, we have all of these dimensions that we can play with in the lessons. But when we look at respiration, we're looking at does someone have to change their breathing when they move? That tells us something about how hard they're working. We're designed to breathe and move at the same time. I was loving when people say, well, what about swimming? You know, the only answer to that question is, when's the last time you swam? Because you better be able to breathe while you're swimming. I mean, this part of swimming is coordinating your breathing with it. 